November of last year, I met someone called Rajarshi Nandi. Strangely, the day I met him was Karl Bhairav Jain. My meditation journey definitely got affected with YSS. You will be tempted to jump in terms of path. Brahma Kumari, Isha Foundation, YSS. So many options in India. No matter how disciplined you are with your meditation, sometimes you will fall off the rail. The city of Banaras. Of all the temples there, I heard about something called a Karl Bhairav Mandir. I was drawn to that image. I didn't know why. If you approach your tantra sadhana with ferocity, you've thought of achieving materially comes to you very fast and you get detached from it very fast. All the 600 people that I've spoken to on the show, perhaps only the monks are truly happy. My question to you is why do you look at suffering as something negative? That's the big realization that I've got in the last two years. This kind of podcast happens once in every two to three years. So I'm going to be very raw and unfiltered, but I'm going to be truthful. Some extremely heavy things will be spoken about today, which is why, first and foremost, I take permission from God in order to execute this podcast perfectly well. For me, this is one of the most important pieces of the year because it's about a subject that's very close to my heart, which is spirituality. The two most important days in any human being's life are the day that the human is born and the day that the human finds out why they're born. Everyone has a particular subject which is the closest to their heart and which they're probably kind of good at. After exploring so many subjects over 30 years of living on this earth and after four years of podcasting so much, after 600 episodes of podcasting, I know for a fact that spiritual conversation is what I was truly born for. I've made a few videos about my own spiritual journey and those were the solo podcasts that did the best. So if you're a newer listener of Beer Biceps, I do recommend that you all check out those first because that was from the 27 to 28 year old version of me. And a lot has happened in the last two years of my life, be it materially or spiritually. For the last five years of my life, I was very diligently following YSS and the self-study lessons that are associated with YSS, Yogoda Satsang Society, which is associated with Yoganand Paramhans. I was a good student. The way spiritual growth works is that if you meditate, you progress spiritually, which in the spiritual world is called going closer and closer to what we know as God, the ultimate power. That's the purpose of spiritual life. Meditation is a quick process to get there. Kriya Yoga, which is a part of YSS, is supposed to be one of the most effective forms of meditation where the spiritual progress is much faster than normal. Anyone who's read the book, The Autobiography of a Yogi, knows what I'm talking about. Um, I didn't get initiated into Kriya Yoga because it's an extremely advanced form of meditation for which you have to prepare your body and your mind. And if you're associated with YSS, you have to earn your initiation. While I can't talk about the details about what I did at YSS, I will talk about something called the Hong Saw technique or the Soham technique. This is a meditation technique that they say Shiva has used himself and they say that this is the preferred meditation of Shiva himself. Um, of all the different forms of meditation that I've done, this particular technique for me, in my experience, was the most powerful so much depth when you truly learn how to do the technique correctly which you can learn through YSS sometimes you meditate so deeply that you forget your identity you forget your gender you forget your species and you just know that you're a being which is in a state of meditation thanks to the Hong Sao technique that's how deep that technique can take you. The Soham technique, the Hong Sao technique. You can try Googling it. You'll read it off of Google. It's not going to be the same as someone who is extremely advanced teaching you the Hong Sao technique, which you get from a meditation school like YSS, which is the big gift of our country, India. You have access to all these advanced schools of meditation with all these advanced practitioners who will guide you through these techniques. You're not going to get this anywhere else in the world. The YSS is present in every country in the world. This whole podcast is not about YSS because 
I actually want to share with you guys the stuff that's new in my own spiritual journey. One of the golden rules of going forward in your spiritual path is that you should not window shop when it comes to spirituality. When you have so many options, so many different yoga schools, um, Brahma Kumari, Isha Foundation, YSS, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar's Art of Living, so many options in India. Shri M School. I can keep going on. You will be tempted to jump in terms of paths and that's something I wanted to avoid the moment I found out about YSS and the moment I began my practice intensely. But what I believe when it comes to your spiritual journey is that sometimes you'll have this massive shift that will be brought about by life. Right before I moved into this house where I'm recording this podcast, I visited perhaps the most important travel destination that I've ever visited till date, the city of Banaras. Fortunately, I vlogged that whole series. So it's a memory that I'm going to share with my children when I have children. But visiting Banaras was the biggest shift in my own spiritual journey. I can't even explain it in words. It's also why I'm choosing to do this podcast in English because my thinking language is in English. Unfortunately, uh, if I'm podcasting in Hindi, it takes me some time to get into a state of flow. I can reach a deeper state as of now and I hope that changes in time. But I can reach a deeper state in English. Banaras. Of all the temples there, for some reason, the moment I heard about something called a Kal Bhairav Mandir, I was drawn to that immediately. I didn't know why. Just because of how the name sounded. I didn't even know what Karl Bhairav was. In fact, on that trip of all the legendary mandirs in Banaras, I only wanted to go to the Karl Bhairav Mandir. I didn't know why. Very genuine story. Went to the temple, documented it for the sake of the vlog, had an intensely connected experience. I felt at home in that temple. That's what led me to studying more about that particular Devta or God or Deity as we call it. <sighs> what I got to know is that it was a form of Shiva. Keep in mind at this point my YSS meditations are going strong. I felt like I was spiritually advancing down the path of Kriya Yoga. But there was something about that Kal Bhairav energy that just stayed with me. Right after that, we moved into this house, which was like a big turning point in my own career. It was a huge surge of material success suddenly, just moving into this house. Right after that, Banaras too. But parallelly, I went through a lot of suffering in my initial phase in this house because I started dealing with the problem that so many of us face, which is loneliness. Loneliness hit me like a truck, even though I was meditating. And when your mental health goes for a toss and you're on a spiritual journey, no matter how disciplined you are with your meditation, sometimes you'll fall off the rail. My meditation journey definitely got affected with YSS. I did reduce my meditation, not significantly, but a bit. For the first time in five years, I kind of took a step back from meditating as much and I just had too much that I was dealing with, both in terms of the inflow of material success in my life and the outflow of my mental health. In fact, I think that up till age 28, 29, how old I was when I moved in here, I didn't really have a terrible mental health phase since my career had begun. Before that, yeah, sure, because of exams and all that, my mental health was up and down. But in my adult life, in my true adult life, my mental health was solid thanks to the meditation. Now I've reached a phase where I've moved out of my house. I'm seeing so much material success, but I'm dealing with so much loneliness. And I've not gone for therapy at that time as well. I reduced my meditation that whole year, the whole of last year was not easy. Tumultuous. It was like a tornado happening. The way I live my life for the sake of podcasting is that we have to release four episodes a week. That means I'm recording at least five times a week, usually six times a week. Sometimes it goes up to even 11 to 12 times. 
it's an intense job um but i'm enjoying the material success so the way life works when you're a youtuber is that you kind of lose a track of time you're just concerned with work because you know that your stuff is growing because of your consistency as i moved forward through last year in about november of last year i met someone called rajarshi nandi who many of you are very familiar with i'm sure if you've clicked on this podcast you've already seen podcasts of myself with rajarshi nandi he's not my guru he is not a guru but sometimes on your own spiritual journey you meet mentors who just twist your spiritual path a little bit and i use the word twist with a lot of caution i use the word twist with a lot of positivity strangely the day i met him was kal bhairav jayanti which is like kal bhairav's birthday in that one year the thoughts of kal bhairav even though they were strong they kind of faded away but on that day because of rajashi nandi sir i remembered visiting the kal bhairav mandir almost exactly a year ago in the previous year if you've seen any of our old rajashi nandi episodes you'd know how intense that first conversation was because we spoke about so many dark things because we spoke about so many deep things in that first conversation itself i remember that my head was spinning after i spoke to him three episodes and i was getting chakkar as they call it that was my introduction to what we now know as tantra when you use the word tantra publicly people kind of get scared people think that oh is it dark is it related to black magic oh my god what is the pseudo science <sighs> tantra loosely translates to technique if you're born in a hindu family you've seen your parents performing poojas you've gone for religious ceremonies where they carry out different rituals all those rituals are techniques and tantra loosely translates to technique you've already seen tantra around you while you're growing up in temples in this country tantra is all around us the word tantra has a negative connotation because of the gifts of british imperialism not going to get deep into that we've spoken about that on an episode with rajashi nandi sir that first meeting with him was an introduction to the world of tantra for me was an introduction to the fact that through mantras or chants from ancient india you do gain access to spiritual growth the goal of tantra is the same as the goal of deep meditation which is spiritual growth rajashi nandi introduced me to the beauties of shaivism Sanatan dharma as they call it hinduism as the world calls it is divided into different schools many of which are now extinct the three prominent ones in india today are shaivism shakt which is related to shakti devi worship and vaishnavism which is related to praying to vishnu shri ram shri krishna he introduced me to shaivism in a deeper way the stuff I discuss with some of my guests that I can never record and put online especially when it comes to spiritual guests. Sometimes the conversations that we have outside of this room are much more explosive than the conversations we have in this room. So let's just say he introduced me to aspects of Shaivism. He explained the most basic form of Bhairav worship. I want to talk about Bhairav a little bit because possibly through this podcast i am trying to understand it deeper as well solo podcasts are always made from state of flow and flow is achieved when you're able to reach your own emotional depths and bring creativity out from there and put it in front of the world in the same way that krishna is an avatar of vishnu they say that bhairav could be understood to be an avatar of shiva but in the same way that perhaps krishna and vishnu are the same yet slightly different when you truly try to understand bhairav you realize that it is slightly different from shiva in the same way that people know 
that hanuman ji is a chiranjeevi that he is alive in our realm in our time and he's here to help you if you call out to him bhairav is the same the issue is that all of us have grown up in a time where we know about krishna we know about hanuman ji we know about shiva we know about vishnu we know about devi ma we've rarely heard about bhairav while we were growing up lots of people believe that bhairav worship reduced in our country because of the last 1000 years that were full of invasions and attacks and the likes people believe that a lot of bhairav temples in the north of the country were completely destroyed and bhairav worship was not that prevalent in the south of the country anyway i don't know what the truth is this is just information i'm relaying off of the show now parallelly coming back to my journey we were talking about how my meditations were reducing a little bit but come what may i was practicing the hongso technique now i'm trying to execute this podcast in english english as a language has certain limitations when you're trying to explain ancient bhartiya concepts um so i'm going to try my best and i also definitely want to say that i am understanding bhairav much more as my spiritual journey moves forward so pardon me audiences as well as bhairav in case i make a mistake in my explanation but i'm going to try my best what i've noticed especially about kal bhairav as a deity is that it's about speed and hustle that's how i'd describe the energy lots of people believe that kal bhairav is a deity that you pray to in order to hasten your spiritual journey which will also mean that it will hasten your karma as it will hasten your suffering in order for you to reach a neutral state of worshiping and eventually reaching your ishta dev your ishta dev is supposed to be the god that's the closest to your heart if you're a hindu and i ask you to close your eyes and i ask you to visualize god the god that you visualize they believe is your ishta dev so bhairav often enters people's lives in order to hasten up things and then make them reach their actual ishta dev and for many people kal bhairav himself or one of the bhairavs themselves is the ishta dev that's a very basic explanation of what bhairav energy is all right this amount of knowledge will be required to understand what happened in my life going forward so after the rajashi nandi episode i am deeply intrigued by tantra i deep dive into the subject there was too many of these micro spiritual instances dreams meeting people like rajashi nandi understanding tantra more there was too many of these micro instances that made me realize that maybe a slightly more feels tantric path is my path in spirituality i remember being a child and watching my mum pray in front of the temple inside my house and i remember her chanting one mantra after another and each of the mantras was about a different god and she tell me that okay this mantra is for this god that mantra is for that god and that was my subjective understanding of spirituality when i was a child seeing the most spiritual person that i knew then which was my mom pray and i thought that that's the right way to pray somewhere as a 29 year old sad adult i understood that tantra is about a similar school of thought very bad and rudimentary explanation of tantra please don't take this um as a quote please don't understand it this way but this is a very bro way of explaining it um a lot of the deities in tantra are like your avengers and in different stages of your tantra practice and your tantra growth you will have to pray to different deities that's how the rules of tantra work so even if you're a part of shaivism and you begin with your bhairav worship eventually you might reach a phase where you'll have to pray to devi ma you'll have to pray to krishna 
I'm not going to get into the details of that because I'm not a guru. I don't wish to mentor anyone on this path because I don't know enough about this path. But this is my understanding from having spoken to Rajeshi Nandi in detail. Coming back to the story, this subjective reality of multiple deities and praying to multiple deities through multiple mantras, it sat even more deeply in my heart than Kriya Yoga did. it sat more deeply in my heart than everything that vice has said and trust me nothing had reached as deep as vice's when it came to spiritual direction these kind of thoughts along with the prior year of not being in the best mental health just made me think that maybe it's time that i just experiment with a newer path and that led me to my basic practice my first basic practice in the world of tantra which was taking a simple mala and doing a mantra jap on om bhairavaya namaha that was my first step i'm not going to get into the details of the practice rajeshi nandi on his own youtube channel has created a very detailed instruction manual about how to go deeper into bhairav worship what i will definitely say is that a lot of things happen as an outcome of that practice they say that the goal in tantra is not just attaining liberation or nirvana they say that the goal in tantra is allowing the deity to sit inside your heart to a degree where eventually you become the deity and this happens over decades perhaps lifetimes depending on how much intensity you can give your own sadhana or your discipline swami vivekanand I once said that every step I take into the light is mine forever. Lots of people can understand a simple quote in many ways. The way I understand it is that when you die, you're not going to take any of the money, any of the fame, any of the love and relationships with you beyond death. The only thing you take with you beyond death is the spiritual growth. you have achieved in this lifetime you'll carry that on to your next life and the more spiritual growth you have chances are the next life will be more conducive for spiritual growth which perhaps could mean that all your difficulties happen early in your childhood in your life and then eventually in life your path is cleared for a smoother spiritual path it could mean that you're given a lot of material comforts throughout your life so that you can just focus on the spirituality which for me is the purpose of material growth and material gifts and material blessings anyway everything is given to you so that you get bored of it and you leave and you focus on what actually matters the stuff you carry into your next life every step i take into the light is mine forever that's what bhairav worship also teaches you because effectively when you're praying to bhairav you are indirectly praying to shiva if you approach your tantra sadhana your discipline with ferocity and trust me i approach it with ferocity because that's the only way i know how to play this game of life if you approach your tantra sadhana with ferocity not only will you experience mystical happenings in your own life not only will you have divine dreams not only will you have a lot of divine moments in your life but you'll also see that everything that you've thought of achieving materially comes to you very fast and you get detached from it very fast it's been a year of learning about bhairav and tantra sadhana and it's been only about Three months or so of actually practicing on the Om Bhairavaya Namaha mantra. What I feel at this stage is a very, very deep sense of detachment. Stoicism, which is a philosophy from the West, Stoicism is all about being unaffected by the wins and losses. For me personally, I believe Shaivism. talks about the same concept or at least turns you into the same concept that's what i've been feeling lately i'm able to see everything from an extremely detached standpoint and that's one of the best places to be in terms of mental health 
my mental health was terrible last and i'm not saying that spirituality is a substitute for therapy i think it goes hand in hand with therapy it's the partner of therapy your human side has to find itself and discover itself through therapy and your soul has to find itself and discover itself through meditation through practice through sadhana what does my sadhana entail right now other than doing multiple malas of the om bhairavaya namaha mantra i'm also working on the soham or hongsaw technique that i learned from yss that's still a massive part of my life every single day especially before the shoots begin at 12 noon by 10:30 i'm in this very room and i'm meditating i begin with the technique i learned at yss i still thank my yss gurus if it's an important podcast for which i'm nervous i'll notice that the meditation goes even deeper i'll come out of it a lighter diya and then i do at least one mala of my om bhairavaya namaha mantra that's pretty much what i'm doing in terms of the sadhana i can share with you guys online there is some more stuff which i'm not able to talk about publicly at this point it's nothing crazy i'm getting deeper into it but what i wish to say is that this i feel is the big blessing of my life that i'm able to practice the sadhana and share aspects of it with you guys publicly this whole content creation journey this content creation career has been about documenting my own journey and my spiritual journey is a massive part of my own journey um spoken about so many aspects of it but at this point i truly believe that as i said earlier we heard about krishna and hanuman ji and shiva growing up and devi ma growing up perhaps there was a reason that we've only begun to hear about bhairav in pop culture much more now if you're surrounded by tantra practitioners in a social setting the conversations go much deeper than just sadhana deities are the equivalent of god and in tantra it's believed that it's the deity's will to come out in the public eye to almost command respect in the public eye and that's exactly where i see my place in the deity's grand scheme of things i'm simply a medium to carry the name of the deity into the world into public forums i've reached a point in my own spiritual journey where i truly do not ask for anything material anymore i want to get married so bad in my heart if you followed this page long enough you know how romantic i am but i have literally stopped asking for that as well because that is the true form of submission to your own deity submission to god uh we had bk shivani on the show she's always given us spectacular conversations and i asked her for spiritual advice because what the bhairav upasana the bhairav sadhana led me into was a phase of thinking where i couldn't visualize much more about what i wanted from my own material journey if i sat in front of my altar which is right here next to me if you're watching the video version of the podcast if i sit in front of my altar sometimes i have a piece of tension in my heart that i just submit i don't ask for anything to be solved i just give it to god but when i was younger if i sat in front of the altar not only would i have the tension i would always have burning desires i want this I want this company to grow this way god take care of that take care of this problem there's none of that anymore of course there's a little bit of tension because i'm a working professional i'm a business owner but that's about it i don't ask god to solve that problem i simply submit to the deity when this began to happen with me i thought that i am at fault that i am not being able to create strategies for my own teams because i personally believe that even strategy first and foremost comes to you from god at least that's been the case in my own spiritual journey the further my spiritual journey went the better my strategies got the better my creativity got 
it was a phase where when i was sitting in front of the altar there was no wishes so when i asked bk shivani this she said that this is probably the biggest blessing of your life that you've reached a point where you've truly submitted where you're allowing god to sit and write your future for you this is called true submission with an element of sadhana with an element of spiritual discipline and chances are that if your sadhana and your spiritual discipline are in place it's very likely that the rest of your life falls into place as well of course there's spiritual escapists in this world but for most people in cities to simply sustain yourself you have to back your spiritual discipline along with your material discipline if you want your career to grow as well the thing with spiritual growth is that it gives you a heap of light after you're given that heap of light it's said that it's in your hands to turn it into material gifts if you desire is that what you truly want and it's in this confusion that i find myself as well there's days where i wish that i could just leave podcasting and leave content creation completely move out of the city move closer to nature and just focus on my sadhana just focus on my spiritual journey and then i know that i've signed up for a long term game this people whose livelihoods depend on me and there's a lot of work to be done one of the greatest spiritual contributions that your life can have is if you're able to actually change society through the material gifts which are an outcome of your spiritual growth so you pray to god you work hard you earn the money and you leave the world a better place than you found it that's the basic duty of any human being according to me but more so the duty of anyone who's both in the world of business and in the world of spiritual seeking when i made my last few spiritual podcasts i was so sure about stuff i was sharing my story so openly with this particular podcast i didn't prep before the episode i just wanted to speak my heart out because that's what this whole youtube journey has been it's about sharing all these things very openly with you guys what i do believe is that i am going closer to shiva because of bhairav it's changing me deeply i sense so much more fame on a material level in the last 2 years and this is something i could kill for in the years prior to the fame actually arriving in my life i feel it's only happened after we've moved into this house there was a part of me that used to feel that mm, why didn't this happen earlier and the more the fame sits in my life and the more it increases and i know it's going to increase and i kind of want it to increase but the more it's there the more i realize that oh okay this means nothing either because i'm experiencing it first hand i've experienced it second hand through all the podcast guests that we've got and as i've said repeatedly of all the 600 people that i've spoken to on the show perhaps only the monks are truly happy some of the soldiers have spoken to it's the monks and some of the soldiers that's it no one else is truly devoid of suffering talking to so many people of course the energy rubs off of course the knowledge rubs off but the level of joy also gets exposed not just through the conversation and energy exchange there's a lot of conversation that happens outside this room as well so it's not just what you guys see through these cameras and through these mics i see their life i see them up close i see them as human beings i see their body language i see their micro nuanced movements i see how they react to things and trust me everyone is suffering the monks have the least amount of it along with some of the souls there's a certain joy in monkhood if you watch any of our episodes with monks you'd understand what i'm saying especially the recent one we did with goranga das prabhu I highly recommend all of you watch it but my point is the one truth that i've learned is that this realm is built for some form of suffering and many people might disagree many people might think that that's a very negative way of looking at life but my question to you is why do you look at suffering as something negative that's the big realization that i've got in the last 2 years suffering is often way bigger in our heads than it is in real life 
and suffering of any kind be it related to your health be it related to your emotions be it related to your material life all of it is an outcome of something you did in this life or something you did in your past life if there's something that doesn't make sense to you the suffering related to that something is going to stay in your life until you learn what it's trying to teach you that's how my viewpoint on suffering has changed and of course that's a very privileged viewpoint i don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from which is why i get to think in this way but what i will say is that i have a public platform and if i don't share my perspective on the platform that's taken years to build then i feel i'm not doing justice to this platform maybe the core of this whole podcast is detachment as well as understanding that true knowledge is knowing that you know nothing the more i podcast the more i realize that i know very very little all i know is that i need to wake up every day focus on my sadhana and allow god to take over my life around me as long as i'm working hard as long as i have faith in my god and as long as i'm focusing on my sadhana everything is going to take care of itself that's where i am spiritually i hope that this podcast added value to your life i honestly don't know about the details of what i spoke but i just felt like creating this episode so thank you for listening in om namah shivaya om mehrabaya namah